All right, FRQ number four from the 2024 AP Physics 2 um, exam, Form O. If there's any corrections, I'll put it as a pinned comment. So two particles, one and two, have a different mass and charge as described by the following. Has a mass M negative charge negative Q, has a mass M over two and a positive charge positive two Q. In separate trials, the device is used to accelerate the particle in the negative Y direction from rest through a potential difference. The polarity of the potential difference, uh, okay can be adjusted so that the particle is either positive charge or negative charge can be accelerated in the negative y direction by the device. Okay, so they're not worried about like, you know, we're accelerating both of them, even though positive and negative have, you know, opposite potentials that you might use. They're saying, well, don't worry about that. We'll accelerate it by some potential and make it go faster, regardless if it's positive or negative. So we ignore gravitational effects. After moving through the potential difference, particles one and two exit the device with kinetic energies K1, K2. Calculate the ratio. Okay, so um, always think about the work is Q times the change in potential is going to be the change. This is like AP physics one. What does work do? It causes a change in the energy, which is the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. Now, because we released them from rest, Okay, because the, let's see what they say, accelerated from rest, we don't have any kinetic energy to start with. So really Q times the change in potential is going to be one half mv squared. Okay, so um, again, we're just going to do the absolute value. So we're going to ignore the negative sign. So for example, for particle one, we would say it is Q times the change in potential is one half m times v1 squared. And then for particle two, it's going to be uh, 2q times delta v is equal to one half. This mass is m over two times v2 squared. And they want to know, uh, actually, so this is just equal to the kinetic energy. They want the ratio of the kinetic energy. So I actually don't need to solve for the speeds. That would be enough if I want to solve for the speeds. They're just saying, well, that's equal to k1 and that's equal to k2, right? That's the kinetic energies there. And so we just want a ratio of k2 to k1. It's going to be 2q delta v divided by q delta v. The same delta v, same q's, that ratio is going to be 2, right? Because it's twice the amount of charge. Now, the velocities will be very different. They're not going to be a 2 to 1 ratio because of the mass difference, but the energy itself is going to be 2 there. I'm not going to circle these. These would be a little confusing for an answer. So I'll put that and that. Okay, um, after exiting the device, the particles enter a large region of constant uniform magnetic field of magnitude B0 is directed in positive Z direction, so out of the page. As shown, each particle is moving in the negative Y direction when entering the region. Each particle is moving in the positive Y direction when exiting. Determine the expression for the speed of particle 2 in the region. Express your answer. So the speed of particle 2 in terms of m, k2, and physical constants as appropriate. Okay, um, Okay. so we, we have the kinetic energy key here. It's 2Q. Wait, uh, expression for the speed. Um, okay, so 2Q times delta V is equal to 1 half MV squared, which is M over 2 V2 squared. Okay. Wait, hang on a second. I'm a little confused on this one. How come I can only use M... Oh, and the kinetic energy. I'm sorry, what's K? Uh, so the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half. So this is K2. This is the kinetic energy. It's 1 half mv squared. So um, this is 1 fourth multiplied by 4. 4 K2 is equal to v squared. Or sorry, we're going to divide by m here. 4 K2. Uh, yeah, multiplied by 4, divided by m. Divided by m that's gives you v squared. So v is going to be uh, square root of 4 K2 over m. Okay, and then you could bring that four out and make it two root k2 over m if you want, but that should be enough. Okay, derive an expression for the horizontal distance between locations where particle two enters and leaves the region. Express your answers in terms of m, q, k2, b0, and physical. Uh, so they just want the distance. They don't really care which way it goes. Ah, oh, I said, I said later on they'll care about the how far it goes. But um, let's go ahead and handle the direction that it's going. So this is a positive charged particle. And so the f is qvb. You don't have to do this for part two, but you're going to have to do this later on. So um, when just looking ahead. So we're going to do the force. So my my right hand rule is velocity is downward. Magnetic field's coming out of the page. So uh, my thumb is pointing to my left. So that means it's going to go like this. Okay, and we want to know that distance. Now that distance is the diameter of a circle because it, they're saying it's moving in the positive y direction. So it moves exactly like half a turn, like 180 degrees. It's not like, it can't be like, 
this or something like that. It can't be like a fraction because then it would be not moving in the positive y direction. So what you know it's the diameter of this circle, which is twice the radius. And remember what we do here to analyze this situation is we say Q times the velocity times the magnetic field because the velocity is perpendicular to B um, is equal to um, uh, MV squared over R, right? So that was equal to um, M V squared over R. This is our general relationship. So R, move the R up is gonna be, well, one of these V's cancel. It's gonna equal MV over QB. Now uh, that's capital M. The velocity is this thing, square root of four K2 over M over the charge, which is, what is the charge of this thing? This was the two Q charge, right? Oh, and this is m over 2. Oops, m over 2. And then this is um, 2q times the magnetic field B0, right? So remember, these are just placeholders for the actual mass, which is m over 2, the q, which is 2q, and the velocity comes up here. And um, honestly, you, you, can, you can leave it like this, or you could simplify. The square root of 4 is 2. That will cancel with that. So you can write it as... Um, and then if you bring the m inside. So honestly, it's okay if you left it like this. I'm just going to simplify it a little bit. Um, the m you bring inside is m squared. Cancel with that. So it becomes mk2 over qb0. Okay, but this answer is totally fine too. I'm just, some of you might simplify. I always like to simplify when I'm, you know, working out an answer. But the 2 and the root 4 cancel. And then the m and the m cancel. leaves an m on the inside like that in the radical. Okay, now sketch, uh, oh, sorry, that's R. Ooh, yeah, okay, so that's R. The diameter is twice that much, right? So that's the radius of the path, but the diameter um, is going to be 2R, so it's going to be 2 root mk2 over qb0. Okay, so that's going to be my answer, because this is actually the radius of the path. So, like that thing there, or double this thing here. Okay, um, let's see. Oh, um, wait, I messed up. This this should have been a 2 here. Sorry, I left. I forgot that 2 down there. Uh, like, Sorry, I'm just messing up my thing. So that will cancel with that. So it should be this. Okay, so I, I forgot this 2 was down here. So those canceled, those canceled, and then I still have a 2. And then I doubled it, so that will get rid of that 2. So then this will be my answer. Okay, sorry. I think I checked my algebra at that time. Hopefully, you guys see anything wrong, you let me know. Uh, sketch and label the paths of both particle 1 and 2. So particle 2 is going to do this. Okay, so this is particle 2. So he goes this way. And we did the right-hand rule already. Particle 1 is going to go the opposite direction. Now, in terms of, um, you know, if we look at his, his, his relationship, like what's going to happen is um, because he is... Uh, you know, ultimately twice the mass and half the charge. <clears throat> so think about, I'm going to double the mass and have the charge. So that's going to double this thing. I'm going to double, wait, I'm going to, let me think about this. I'm going to double the mass and have the charge. So it gets bigger, this gets smaller, but the overall thing is going to get bigger. So particle one is actually going to travel a lot further, right? Because my primarily because of the, it's lighter, right? So we'll, we'll maybe do it like this. <clears throat> so this is two. And then this guy is going to have a bigger radius. I don't know. I don't think you have to be precise, necessarily precise on <clears throat> how that is. <clears throat> okay, uniform electric fields added to the region such as particle one of negative charge travels with constant speed in a straight line through the region. Determine the direction of the electric field. Okay, so we have the magnetic force going this way. If I want to counteract that, I need an electric force to go this way. But a negative charge always has an electric field opposite the direction of the electric force. So that means the electric force has to be, the electric field has to be to the right, even though electric force to the left, because it's negative charge. So it's going to be to the right, or positive x direction. Either is probably fine, like that. And let me double check. Uh, that's everything.